What if God created transgender people? It says male and female, not male or female. God also has feminine attributes. Thank you. Very, very thoughtful question. Um, well, God has created everyone, so we, we can, whether whoever anyone is or however they identify, they are, they are created by God, which, which immediately tells us they are of inestimable worth. They are to be honored. They are worthy of our care and service. They will most likely, whoever they are, have a story worth listening to. They are someone worth getting to know. They will be someone who is amazing if they are created in the image of an amazing God. However, what none of us can do is simply read off from our own intuitions and feelings how we believe God has created us to be. One of the painful things that Jesus says to all of us is that how we have been born is not is not quite right. We've all been born a bit wrong. Which means that things that feel very, very innate to us and have done maybe since we were born may not be right and may not be true. They may not be a reflection of who God has made us to be. So Jesus says that when he, he says to a man called Nicodemus in John chapter 3, you must be born again. Now we're so familiar with the language of, of being born again, it's kind of become part of kind of standard Christian speak, that we, we forget just how extraordinarily offensive that phrase is. Um, because Jesus isn't saying, add a bit of religion and spirituality to life as though it's a bit of seasoning. When Jesus says you must be born again, he's saying, you didn't come out right the first time. And you don't need to try a bit better, you need to be made new and you need a new self. Now that is what Jesus says to every single one of us. So to someone who says, well, God has created me transgender, I would want very gently to, to point out God has created every single one of us but we can't pin on God every single instinct and preference that we, that we experience. And again, that's the case for all of us. This is, I'm not singling anyone, anyone out here. Um, sin has distorted us and it has disordered us. So those false identities we keep giving ourselves are not a sign of how God has created us, but they're a sign of how, how the fall has distorted our thinking. So this is not an issue that is unique to people who are transgender. That's just one example, again, of what is true of every single one of us. And actually, the fact that God has created us doesn't just mean God, God got the kind of flat pack from Ikea and assembled us. When we say God created us, we mean more than God kind of stuck the limbs together and, and assembled the body. We are saying God had the idea of you in the first place. He was the one who came up with the idea of you. And he was having a good day when he came up with that idea. He got a kick out of thinking up you. Now, every single one of us has some sense that we're not the person we sense we should be. that there's, there's, a, there's a version of us we, we sense we should be that we, we just can't be. And that is a reflection of the fact that God came up with the idea of us, but we don't do a very good job of being us. Which is why we need to be made new by Jesus. And the wonderful thing is, as we're made new by Jesus and as we follow Jesus, we don't become less ourselves, we become who we truly are. So Jesus says something very paradoxical and, again, very difficult for all of us, but something utterly wonderful. He says, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Jesus says, yourself needs to be denied. You need to say a, a deep and profound no 
to some of the things that are deepest within you and feel most defining of you. And yet as you deny self and follow Jesus, what actually happens is you become the you that God always had in mind. You become your real self. The self you find you, you were denying is actually your distorted self. Now, I don't know how Jesus pulls this off. I just know that he does. But if every single one of us became more like Jesus, we would not become more like each other. But we would become more like the real us, the real self. Um, I've talked for so long, I've forgotten what the question was, but I'm assuming I've answered. Oh, yeah, so male... It's very clear from the, from the Bible, by the way, going back to male and female, not male or female, that, that the, the Bible is speaking there in terms of a binary, not in terms of a blend. Um, again, that, that is very painful for, for some of us to hear where it feels as though we might be some kind of mix of male and female. That is some people's experience. And of course, for those who are intersex, there seems to be some, some biological ambiguity. But again, that doesn't override the fact that God has designed us as male and female. It simply reinforces the painful reality that our experience of that in this world is not going to be straightforward and will often be very painful. Um, God having feminine attributes, God is the creator of male and female. He's not contained by either one of those. He reveals himself to us and reveals himself to us as, as father and son and spirit. But as father, son and spirit, he, he also shows us characteristics that we typically think of as being feminine. There are times in, the, in, in scripture where God describes himself as being like a uh, being like a mother. Um, that doesn't mean God is is gender fluid. Uh, it doesn't mean that God is ambiguous. God is above and beyond gender. He's above and beyond biological sex because he is spirit. But he still re reveals himself to us and in his inner life is father, son and spirit. There's some mystery in there and um, we may not get our heads around that fully but we both want to preserve the ways in which God has identified himself whilst recognising that his attributes are, are far wider than what we tend to typically associate with someone with people who are fathers and sons. Does that make sense? So there's, there's an irony here. Um, I don't mean to sound flippant in saying this, but there is an irony that some of the people who are most insisting on everybody's right to be called by their chosen pronoun are not extending that to God. 